Hello, my name's Faye and because I find it impossible to rate the six books that I read in February or to compare them or put them into some kind of ranking, we're going by length. I'm going to start with the longest book that I read and finish off with the shortest. February is the shortest month. I don't know, maybe there's some logic in there. So let's start with the very first book that um, I read in February, which was The Longest, and that's Coming at 440 pages, You Again by Kate Goldbeck, which is a romance novel. And it's a gender swapped When Harry Met Sally retelling. We have Ari, who wants to become a comedian in New York City. She's afraid of commitment and, in a way, chooses either friends with benefits solutions or. Um, like third wheeling in other like couples relationships in like sort of polygamous settings, open relationship settings as a way to deal with her fear of commitment. And we have, is he called Josh? I feel like Josh is a romance name. Yes, we have Josh, who is like a rich kid, uh, born and bred in New York City. His dad had a really like famous diner and he wants to become a successful chef. And the two of them meet, initially don't really like each other, and over the course of the book form a friendship, um, fall in love. It's not a spoiler, it's a romance book. And after this, I actually rewatched When Harry Met Sally, which I really liked. And I also really like this book, actually. Um, there are sort of snippets of phone conversations and like messaging conversations in this book. I always like that, like, I don't know, mixed media is giving it a bit much, but I like that kind of element in a romance story. I thought their conversations were um, understandable, relatable. They both go through breakups and they don't jump into anything. There is space for them to sort of mourn the end of a relationship. I don't know. I, I just really like this one. I like the tone of this and I was really rooting for them, which is the most important thing in a romance novel, really. Um, so yeah, I guess you could turn this like a friends to lovers trope if you wanted, but I think when Harry met Sally sort of just sums up this story really well. Next at 408 pages, my copy of Friendaholic by Elizabeth Day has 408 pages. Uh, this is a non-fiction book, which you can hear my mum and me talk about at length in my previous video. We took this as the start of this sort of themed reading project that we want to do where we pair a non-fiction book with a fiction book on a theme. Friendship was our first theme. And in this um, non-fiction book, Elizabeth Day talks about her own friendships and how they've shaped her, how important they are to her. Every chapter is dedicated to a particular friend in her life. There are some fun, interesting facts and statistics and research that she cites in this, which I really appreciated. It's really easy to read, which I think is important to some readers when you decide whether or not you want to pick up a non-fiction book. I, on the whole, liked the first third and then it lost me. There were uh, there was quite a large discussion around infertility and her sadness about not having her own children and what that does with friendships. And I actually thought that took up too much space in this book. And uh, I wouldn't align or agree with some of the things that she says about her personal attitudes to friendships. But there you go. It's her own personal attitude. This is not a hard scientific nonfiction book about friendships. This is a very personal recollection of what uh, being on the hunt for as many friendships and connections as possible sort of does to one individual. I thought it was interesting I tabbed a few things um but on the whole this was a little bit of a letdown I had other people have enjoyed this way more than me I remember Lauren I believe from Lauren and the Books and and Simon from Savage Reads talking about this really really highly and for me this was just okay Next, at 368 pages, I read the digital copy of A Last Call at the Local by Sarah Grunder Ruiz, I believe. And this, again, is a romance novel and one that I enjoyed far less than you again. In this, we follow Rain, with an E at the end. What a silly romance name. 
who dropped out of med school. She's an American and she's now traveling Europe as a busker with her guitar and secretly dreams of making it big as a musician. And then all her gear gets stolen and she ends up working at a pub for, I'm looking down at my notes because again, I don't remember the protagonist's names, for Jack. Jack, who runs a family owned pub and has dreams of revitalizing this pub, hires her as like an events manager, sort of, after talking to her for five minutes. It's dodgy. There's like some like instant attraction, if not love, which I just is just a trope that I really dislike in romance novels. It to me makes it unrealistic. And I know that's a weird thing to demand in romance, but I do actually like my romance with a heavy dose of realism. And uh, the the other really strong element of this story is that there is quite a bit of mental health representation because Rain um, has ADHD, which she sort of found a way with dealing with and sometimes not. And Jack, our male protagonist, has OCD. And I actually thought, interestingly, those chapters were much stronger, the, 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 the chapters from his point of view. Uh, even though the author um, doesn't ha ha hasn't has no experience of OCD firsthand, which I thought was interesting um, that she sort of did a better job as at representing uh, a, a mental health um, challenge that she doesn't have experience with, and um, I, I I believe I don't want to misquote her. She does have ADHD and that was like the weaker representation on the page. I thought that was curious. And then, you know, throw in your sort of typical romance elements. There's a cat um, that frequents the pub, which just reads like a dog, not a cat. It's like a small detail, but it bugged me. Um, there are some side characters thrown in there that really don't get a lot of storyline. This is a third in a series, however, and I hadn't read the previous book, so maybe that also sort of explains why some of the characters didn't really make much sense to me. Um, the author did actually mention that she preferred writing the male character to the female character, um, and in a way I just think that's sad. I think she kind of... Um, she did her female protagonist dirty. If even she didn't enjoy writing from her perspective that much, then, you know, she did have the power to change that a little. So yeah, I was disappointed by Last Call at the local. Coming in at 279 pages, I read Eloquent Rage by Brittany Cooper. A black feminist discovers her superpower is the subtitle. And in this, she talks about being a black feminist in the USA. I believe this was published in 2018. And um, there wasn't much new stuff for me to learn in this, but I did really like her tone. And I think I listened to almost all of this uh, on audio and the author reads this herself. And <laughs> ironically, with that title, she is incredibly eloquent. Just her use of language, I think, is really um, purposeful and listening to her read the audiobook and I usually crank up the speed of audiobooks to 1.5. I really felt like she could probably win an argument with all the right um, arguments <laughs> um, in, in, in pretty much any conversation, any company. Um, yeah, so I came away really being interested in her. This is very personal. She also talks about her own family experiences, history, upbringing, and how that shaped her attitudes to race and feminism and the necessity of intersectionality uh, when discussing these topics. Um, but yeah, this I, I, I liked her, I liked the format, um, but I didn't take loads away from it that I hadn't already read in sort of similar books before. And then with 188 pages, I read The Awakening by Kate Chopin, and then there are four other short stories added 
in here called uh, Desiree's Baby Lilacs Miss McEnders and a pair of silk stockings. So not all of this is the sort of short novel or novella The Awakening. And uh, my mum recommended I read this. Um, the All the stories in this were published in the late 1800s, I think 1893 to 1899, something like that. So I very much feel like this could be a good contender for the sort of rediscovered feminist texts. Um, and in The Awakening, the, the main story in this, we follow a really bored housewife who um, develops a crush on a younger man and that ignites her sense of desire and passion and also wanting to rediscover herself to a certain extent and her self-expression. I thought all the themes in this were really interesting and I do really like reading older feminist writings and literature to sort of pick apart what stated and what really stands the test of time and what is a universal um stance um not just <laughs> across um countries universal but also across time um so i really liked reading this one i think maybe i actually enjoyed reading the short stories more because the awakening did have its lengths and maybe for a good reason because our main character is very very bored um so you could say that that is almost like a stylistic choice to sort of have this repetitive sense of her just sort of socializing meeting people and nothing really mattering in her life um but still as a reader i, I thought that dragged a little bit um but yeah I, I would really recommend this if you are interested in like classic feminist writings i talked about this more at length with my mum again and there's a theme this month because she recommended this she was one of the 12 people that i asked for uh, 12 books in 12 months recommendations for the year so um yeah you can also check out that video if you want to see that and then finally the shortest book that we read my mum and i read this this could be a shared what we read in february really was rest teeth by tony morrison which uh the sort of new issue was published in 2022 with a foreword by zadie smith but i think originally it was published in 1983 as a short story in an anthology and I feel like the marketing on this really, really steered how I read this and with what expectations I read the short story. Um, we follow two women who meet as girls in an orphanage and then over the course of their adult life bump into each other a few times, catch up. Um, and I wouldn't really say they are friends, but they are sort of, I don't know, their, their lives uh, mingle and drift apart and they really use each other in a, in a way as a yardstick to evaluate their own lives as well. The whole marketing around this really focused on them being of different race and one being black, one being white, and we don't know which one's which. So that sort of forces the reader into a sort of detective position and I very much read the short story falling into all these stereotypes that I have and and sort of pondering whether oh the fact that this protagonist just said that does that indicate that she is black or that she is white um, and I'm not sure that that was the intention with the story um, I talked about the short story with my mum at length because this was the fiction pairing on our friendship theme. And my mum had a really, really different perspective on the short story, especially because it's not actually stated on the page that one of the women is black, one of the women is white. It just says that they are of different race and that their race, racial identity is important to them. And um, yeah, so in a way, uh, we as readers read into the story. I definitely read into the story and maybe 
the forward forward by Zadie Smith and the whole marketing that I had sort of picked up on in the last two years since the, the, the reissuing of this short story really influenced um, how I read this story. I would be really, really curious to hear if anyone else has read this Toni Morrison short story. Toni Morrison, obviously, is just like a huge name anyway. And I, um, I do actually really recommend that you check out this story and just sort of um, think, think about how you approach this story. Um, yeah, and then share <laughs> that with me. What's the shortest and longest book that you read in February. I had a bit of a mixed reading month. I didn't have a great month just personally. I'm hoping to read a bit more in March. I hope, however, that you have a wonderful reading time and I'll see you next week. Bye.